Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Pat Sherwood and a man who really needs no introduction and I feel like I would not be doing you justice with one. The 2008 CrossFit Games champion, the man who finished third at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games and a seven-time CrossFit Games competitor, and that's just scratching the surface, Jason Kalipa. How did we talk you into this? Oh, oh it was a lot. No, you guys, you guys didn't have to talk to me. Contract about negotiations. Yeah, yeah, contract I was actually really looking forward to being a part of this. I think uh, over the years I've watched the show. I've been on the show a few times, just barely interviewed. But uh, I'm looking to add some value and have some fun with you guys. You guys always look like you have a jam, so. It's going to be a blast, blast man. up the joy. We're happy to have you. We yeah. have, we've had a little bit of time now to digest the entire 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games season. We're going to look back on our top three moments from the Open, the Regionals, and the Games, our two biggest lessons learned, and the one thing we're looking forward to next year. Three, two, one. Let's start with our top moment from the Open. Pat, we'll go with you. I got to start with 14.5 of the Open. Usually I'm here at the desk talking to you guys out there, but I got to leave here, be a spectator in the audience, which is rare, and it was incredible. And also the first time in Open history yep. that we've had. We had five champs all in the same heat, men and women competing simultaneously. So I got to be there, feel the energy of the crowd. It was a fantastic experience. And you were part of that event. Would you qualify that as a fantastic experience? <laughs> it was, was that your most memorable moment? It was a fantastic experience, but it was also a very stressful mm -hmm. experience. I didn't wasn't of, stressed out at all. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I took the stress for you. But, you know, 5,000 people there mm -hmm. under the lights. You don't know what the workout is. You're walking you're like, oh, my God. You know, all these chants around you. It was, right. it was an amazing experience, but stressful. But we've seen now the Open evolve a little bit as well this year, and that, that, was, that was pretty big, right? Yeah, the Open's definitely evolved, uh, specifically this year. You know, historically, what we see in the Open is uh, AMRAPs mm -hmm. generally, right? Um, but what we saw this year is we saw a workout four time, and that was 14.5. Yeah. It was the first time we've really seen a workout four time. And what I think we're seeing here is what kind of foundation is that laying for the future? Yeah. What are we going to see next year? Are we going to see a one rep max? Are we going to see another four-time workout? It opens the door to a ton of different things that can hold on. Yeah, well, let's move on to regionals. And there were some great moments throughout those regional weekends. And I know, Jason, you and I are on the same page on this when we talked about this. Something went down in the southeast that really stood out in my mind. Oh, something went down for <laughs> sure. I, uh, you know, watching all the regionals, you know, NorCal went last. And so I had an opportunity to watch all the different regionals happen. And I was paying attention, of course, trying to see what I could pick up and use for my own you know, well-being. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that stood out to me more than anything was Elijah Muhammad. His legless rope climb workout was just a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. And when I think when we watch CrossFit, sometimes it looks a little brutal. But this case, yeah. it looked beautiful. The guy jumped up higher than I could jump up twice, you know, and he just <laughs> made one, every one of them just look effortless. So that was amazing. You got to watch all the regionals back here, and I know you were studying them all the time. What stood oh, yeah. out for you? I was just impressed by the rookies, man. It was kind of the year of the rookie, and it just, regionals really highlighted that. A lot of them winning their region and pushing around some vets. I mean, I got to write them down. There's so many. We had Danae Brown in Australia, Matt Fraser up in New England, Jana Koski in Europe, Alexander Lachance in North Central, Cole Sager in the Northwest, and then both the male and female uh, number one spots from the Southeast, Emily Bridgers and Noah Olson. I mean, it was incredible, yeah. and it was just only built my excitement to see what are these guys and girls going to do at game time. And they and they did yeah. do something mm -hmm. at game time. Oh, yeah. What we saw is we saw some rookies pop into that top 10 yeah. spot. So. Mm -hmm. Matt Fraser finishing second, best example there. And Noah Olson was on top of the leaderboard for, for a, a while, while there. Yeah, for a, for a long while at the games. Let's move on now to the games. Great moments there, of course. Rich Froning winning his fourth straight, and you know, Camila Blanc Bazinet finally getting to the top of the podium. Other than that, though, there was a ton to love. And, and for you, there was a there's a, a rookie in there that was pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a lot of things that mm -hmm. I enjoyed about the CrossFit Games. Obviously, Rich Camille did great. But uh, what stood out to me when I was looking back on it, and uh, what I what I couldn't help but overlook was just Cody Anderson. Yeah. I mean, the guy. You know, not only was he impressive on the things I thought he was going to do good at. You know, he weighs 160 pounds, a smaller guy. We knew he was going to do pretty well on the muscle up uh, workout. But what I was most impressed with was on, uh, him on the clean ladder. Yeah. I mean, the guy PR'd his clean. I talked to him right after it. And here I am about 10 feet away from this guy. He looks like a tiny, you know, just not as strong as you would think he is. Right. And he just crushed it. 310 pounds, finished the ladder off, and I was just inspired. Kind of like a Ben Smith yeah. looks unassuming. This oh, yeah. guy is even more unassuming than Ben Smith. And comes out and just crushed it. 325 pound overhead squat. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess. by it. a long shot. We talked about this uh, at the games, what your top moment was. And now that you've had a couple weeks, has that changed? Yeah, and I'm going to try not to get misty right now. It hasn't changed at all. Chris Spieler, man. I mean, come on. The man, the myth, the legend. Just retiring after his seventh appearance at the games. In very good company with seven times at the games. And just, you know... He's a friend, he's been an inspiration to me since I started to get into CrossFit, but to see everyone else in the crowd give him a standing ovation and to see that same emotion 
shared by so many others was just an extremely moving experience. Lessons learned. Every year after the games and after the season, we talk about, okay, well, what did we learn this year? There's always a surprise. There's always some new lesson that we take into the next season. And Jason, we'll start with you. Your two lessons learned. The first one I know has to do with recovery. It's more important now than it has ever been. Yeah, I mean, coming as a competitor in the CrossFit Games, what I've seen over time is generally we'd work out in the morning, have an event, maybe afternoon, maybe evening. And in between, you can go back to your suite, you can go hang out in the athlete zone. Um, but this year, what they did is they had the teams in the morning and the individuals in the evening. And so what you're really seeing is, you know, you went back to back to back. And so what a lot of people don't realize is you compete, you then walk back to the athlete area, about 10, 15 minutes later, you're warming up again, getting ready for your next event. And so recovery starts to play a huge role. Um, in addition to that, what, one of the biggest things that I saw this year is just how the athletes have gotten so much yeah. better. You know, leading up into this year's games, uh, my coach and I, Chris Hinshaw, we did a pretty good job analyzing, you know, from the burden run, what kind of mile paces were people running? Because, you know, they announced the triple threes ahead of time. So I did the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did it and I kind of calculated where I was at. And looking at the burden run, um, what we saw was, you know, people were keeping, you know, maybe a seven minute mile pace would put them in a good position. But what we saw uh, coming at the triple threes is I ran sub seven minutes. I thought that would put me in a good position. What actually ended up happening is 15 people passed me up. Wow. Here I am running a, a, a sub seven minute mile pace, which I thought was going to put me in a good position. Yeah. After all that rowing right. double After unders. the rowing, after the double unders, and what happened? Boom, I got passed up. Not once, not twice, 15 times. <laughs> and uh, I just couldn't believe how the athletes have gotten that much better, specifically at running, but also in many other things. Mm -hmm. And playing off the triple threes, what really stood out to me was pacing. You really had to be disciplined, specifically in the triple threes, or you were going to pay the man for it. And one of the best in the business, we saw look more human than ever before, that being Rich Froning Jr., who's so good at pacing. And if you watch the video, you can see he's looking at you while you're rowing. You're one of the best rowers in the business, no doubt about it. Trying to stick with you, know, you like he does, you know, looking around at the screen. Same thing with the double unders, then get out there in the run and just you know, had to walk at times so that he didn't black out. He said your head was spinning and whatnot, and that happened to multiple other athletes. So that event hit people in a way that I didn't expect, and I just, I could watch it again and again. On top of that, remember like if you're playing, this is like that Madden football game, mm -hmm. where you can like build your own football player and you have this much speed or agility, and you, you can't build a super player because that's not fair. Right. Well, that's kind of what the CrossFit Games mm -hmm. athletes are now. In my head, you're like, all right, well, we're gonna do you know, be able to do the triple threes in this fast time. But then they're also going to be able to do a, a clean ladder up to 345 pounds. Well, then they can also walk in their hands unbroken. They can also do overhead squats at 245 pounds in a workout and strict deficit handstand push-ups. So like, if you were building that character in a video game, they'd be like, that's not fair. That person doesn't really <laughs> right. exist. And now these days, the games are filled yeah. top to bottom with those athletes. And I just wonder, what's it going to be next year? Yeah. What's going to be the year after that? So I'm just consistently blown away. Let's look ahead. To 2015, we have I think seven months until the open starts, the so a lot ticking. of people getting yeah, ready. The what are you looking forward to the most, Pat, to next season? In my mind, the 2015 season, specifically the games, as I picture it, it's a motel, it's a classy motel, okay? But there's a vacancy <laughs> sign just flashing, and that vacancy is on the men's side because this guy is not mm -hmm. competing as an individual. Rich Froning mm -hmm. is not coming back as an individual. That's a huge vacancies, I mean two out of three spots at the podium, someone's going to win the CrossFit Games this year, 2015, and it's not going to be Rich Froning, and it's not going to be Jason Kalipa, and I cannot wait to see who that's going to be. How about you, Jason? What are you looking forward to next year? Well, I mean, still this year we have some things coming up, yeah, right? Yeah, team series. So we have the team mm -hmm. series coming up. I'm fortunate enough to be on a team uh, with Julie Fouché, Sam Briggs, and Mr. Rich Froning. Not bad. And yeah. so, you know, not It'll a bad well. team. <laughs> and so I'm very excited for that. I'm obviously excited. I'm hoping they're going to have another Team USA event, mm -hmm. the invitation like they've had in the last couple of years. But leading in next year, I really think what we saw this year is we saw some rookies come onto the scene, particularly Matt Frazier. He came on and he just showed that he's he's a force to be reckoned right. with. And so, deal. you know, he's the real deal. And so what Pat's talking about is, you know, who's going to come up and take on that spot? And I think there's, you know, the, the top 10 guys was a who's who of CrossFit. But what I'm curious about, who are going to be those rookies? Mm -hmm. Who are going to be those guys right now who are watching ESPN? today and they're saying okay I could do that and they actually get there yeah. that's what I'm excited to see a lot of fun stuff to watch you mentioned the team series possibly invitational if we do that again and then the open just seven months away and you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this guy here at the desk can't wait for that for Pat Sherwood and Jason Kalipa I'm Sean Woodland we'll see you next time